Hello everyone and welcome back to my playlist of anatomy. We are doing head and neck anatomy and the topic of discussion is the internal, yeah, internal parts of the cranial cavity, interior of the skull. And uh, today's video is going to be focusing on middle cranial fossa. So again, to orient you, what we are doing is this is the uh, skull, for example, aapke kopri hai. And we cut it like this, remove this part of your uh, cranial cavity, which is what we call the vault. So, if you have a brain, if you have a brain, then what you see at the base is the base of the skull. And the base of the skull is divided into three cranial fossa, which we have discussed. And the anterior cranial fossa is already done. Today's topic is going to focus on this bit, which is known as the middle cranial fossa. Okay? And it contains very important openings. We'll talk about them. So, it is deeper than the anterior cranial fossa. So, the, as the cavity, as we move posteriorly from the anterior side, that's the anterior part of the base of the skull, which is what we called the anterior cranial fossa. So, this is a bit deeper. Uh, and you can see here. So, there is a, you know, and the reason is because the brain ka pura part ek fit hota. So, that is a bit deeper structure as compared to the anterior cranial fossa. Okay. And it's like a butterfly being narrow and shallow in the middle and wide and deep on each side. So if you look here, you can imagine, you see this, this bit, this is just like a, a butterfly <laughs> structure. It actually looks like a butterfly. So that's a butterfly type of a structure. Now, as we did for the anterior cranial fossa, it is very important to understand okay, what are the boundaries of uh, post uh, middle cranial fossa. For each of them, actually, we will be doing this. So each is to be clear here. Okay, the posterior boundary of the anterior cranial fossa will actually be the anterior boundary of the middle cranial fossa. If you don't understand this, you can rewind it again. Look, this anterior cranial fossa was the posterior boundary of the anterior cranial fossa. The posterior boundary was the wing of his phenoid, anterior clinoid process, and anterior margin of the sulcus chiasma. This is the anterior boundary of the middle cranial fossa. So, anteriorly, posterior border of the lesser wing of sphenoid, anterior clinoid process, and anterior marginal sulcus chiasmata. So it should make sense because this is a dividing line between the anterior cranial fossa and the middle cranial fossa. It is common to both these fossae. Okay. Posteriorly, what separates it from the posterior cranial fossa is the superior border of the petrous temporal bone and the dorsum cilia of sphenoid. So this is what it is. Ye posterior boundary hai and the structures you have to remember is this bit, which is the dorsum cilia in the middle. And then you also remember this superior uh, border of the temporal bone. So, yehi phir again boundary hogi, entry boundary hogi, posterior cranial fossa ki. And laterally what happens, the greater wing of sphenoid bone maujood hai and anterior inferior angle of the parietal bone and the squamotemporal temporal bone. So, that all happens here. This is the lateral boundary of the middle cranial fossa. Okay. If we talk about the floor, the floor is formed of different structures, obviously. Uh, it's largely formed by the body of sphenoid in the median region. So, if you talk median region, ki baat kare, so this is the body of sphenoid here. And by the greater wing of sphenoid, squamous temporal bone, an anterior surface of the petrous temporal on each side. So, this side and this side, uh, these are the bones. In the middle is the sphenoid. Uh, important features bhi aapko ke for each cranial fossa, you have to remember what are the fossae available, what are the important structure. So here the important structures include um, in the median area. So when we say the median area, that is the area that we are talking about. Okay. So here in this diagram, I have that the whole cranial cavity is only the median uh, medial cranial, middle cranial fossa ko enlarge karke aapko uska ek side ka view dikha rahe hain. So, in the median area, the body of the sphenoid is present on, uh, presents the following feature. Sulcus chiasmatus or this is also known as the uh, optical groove, yeah, optic groove. It leads on each side to the optic canal. So, if you, so this is sulcus chiasmatus in the middle. That is the sulcus chiasmatus structure. Dono side space ke kya maujood hai? Optic canal. Idhar bhi optic canal hai, idhar bhi optic canal hai. Optic chiasma does not occupy the sulcus. It lies at a higher level behind the sulcus. That's an important point. It just does not sit over here, okay? It's at a different level, so it does not touch it. The optic canal leads to the orbit. This optic canal is direct connection to your It goes to the orbit. It is bounded literally by the lesser wing of the sphenoid on this side. And in front and behind by the two roots of the lesser wing and medially by the body of sphenoid. So, optic canal ki boundaries exam mein bahut poochne hai. So, if you look, focus here, ke iske lateral side pe kya hoga, medial, anterior, posterior side pe kya hoga, it's an important discussion. 
Another important uh, structure in uh, this middle region of the middle cranial fossa is uh, what we call the hypophyseal fossa or the pituitary fossa or the cella tersica. They are all similar names. So this bit is the hypophyseal fossa. Here there is a fossa ki tarah, a cavity ki tarah cheez hoti hai. And this is uh, a very important structure. The upper surface of the body of the sphenoid is hollowed out in the form of a Turkish saddle. As a puri iske andar hollowness, ek is tarah ki uh, pit hoti hai and is, this is known as cella tersica. It consists tuberculum cellae in front and hypophyseal fossa in the middle and the dorsum cellae behind. Okay, And these structures are very important because they harbor something important. So for example, the hypophyseal fossa hai, usme hypophysis cerebrae fit hota hai. A very important concept to understand because that is a very important gland of your body. Okay. Tuberculum cellae separates the optic groove from the hypophysial. So optic groove is again um, a, a very close proximity structure to the hypophysial fossa. And um, guys, these are all important, clinically very very important stuff. Okay, because if hypophysial cerebrae me koi bhi tumor hoga expansion, to uske expansion ki jagah nahi hai because yahan pe bony structure maujood hai. All these will come later on. So pay attention here. Dorsum cellae is a transverse plate of bone projecting upward. It forms the back of the saddle. Um, posterior clinoid process tak hi jata hai. So all, all important uh, points, uh, some of them are very high yield clinically, some of them are not. So uh, this middle area. So middle area ke jo important structures hain, wo hain optic canals I would say and hypophyseal fossa. That's very important to remember in the middle area of the middle cranial fossa. Now, if we talk about the lateral area, so that is the lateral area. And in this lateral area, maybe obviously, very important structures that we see. What is The lateral area is deep and lodges the temporal lobe of the brain. This pure me temporal lobe of the brain fit hota. That's why it is a bit deeper. It is related anteriorly to the orbit, laterally to the temporal fossa, and inferiorly to the infratemporal for all important connection. Anteriorly, is ke aage yahan pe orbital cavity se link hai bilkul. So any fracture here will lead to disturbance in the orbital cavity. And uh, laterally, it is connected to another uh, very important structure, the temporal fossa. Superior orbital fissure. Now that's a very important structure present here. So if you look uh, at this particular diagram, um, or maybe the other one where, yeah. So if we look here, the superior orbital fissure is a very important structure which you see right at the anterior side of the lateral part of the middle cranial fossa. You see, this is the superior orbital fissure. Very important structure. Why am I saying very important structure? Because it uh, has very important uh, stuff passing through it. Okay, so go search. What are the stuff passing through the middle cranial fossa's superior orbital fissure? Very, very, very important thing to remember. Okay, um, here they are not talking about in this particular uh, part of the text. They're not talking about what structures pass through it. They're just telling you this is what is present. We will talk about when we talk about uh, further soft tissue uh, of the head and neck cavity. We will talk about her orbit, me se, her fissure, me se, kya kya cheeze guzar rahi hoti, Okay. But for now, when we are reading this text, mein padha rahe hon, ke, well, this is the structure which passes through and we take this name, superior orbital fissure. You should know where it is. Okay, So it is present right on the anterior side of the middle cranial uh, fossa, ka lateral part. Because the middle part was this structure, now we are talking about the lateral part. Ki, okay? Another important structure is the greater wing of the sphenoid, which presents the following structure, foramen rotundum, oval and spinosum. Three important foramina. Or in three important phenomena, say, obviously, very important things go through. The top most is the rotundum, then ovale is a little bigger one, and spinosum is a little small one. All of them are present in this greater wing of sphenoid. Okay. Then the imagery is phenoidal foramina. Um, another important foramina, just means obviously vein goes through here, imagery vein. All these are important structures for you to remember. Oh, this is a must master diagram. Okay, then there are some other foramen lazarum, for example, uh, anterior surface of the pister temporal bone, jo hai, usme phir kuch alag structure hai, but let's first see where is foramen lazarum. So, foramen lazarum is another important um, uh, structure which you must know it is present rather on the medial side, very close to the middle part of the middle cranial fossa. So, here it is, foramen lazarum. So, remember the locations, okay? So Next, we have to focus on the anterior surface of the petrous temporal bone, which presents the following structure. This is a trigeminal impression, and that's obviously because of uh, the nerve which is passing through it. Okay, and the ganglion. There is a hiatus and groove for greater petrosal nerve, 
which obviously will deal with the greater petrosal nerve. There is a hiatus in groove for the lesser petrosal nerve as well. And still more laterally, there are arcuate eminence, which actually are produced by the air key semicircular canals. And then there is tegment tympani, which is a thin plate of bone um, to the arcuate eminence. It forms a continuous sloping roof of the tympanic antrum. So things are here connected with the uh, air structures as well. So if you look here at this diagram, Remember, the middle cranial fossa is a major, major, major uh, perforated structure which connects with a lot of structure. So it contains a lot of foramina, it contains a lot of structures in nearby my both important uh, structures. Only. So for example, um, you know, not only that these uh, small openings are there, but also there are very thin plates between the cranial cavity base of the skull and important structures. So, so for example, uh, anterior cranial fossa may orbit was an important connection. Middle cranial fossa may air is an important connection. So if there is any fracture here, very close here are the semi-circular canals. Itni close ke unke yahan pe eminence bane hote hai. So there are literally eminence uh, which can be seen on uh, uh, so this eminence for example. The arcuate eminence is ke bilkul niche obviously is arcuate eminence ke niche. There will be semi-circular canals. So if a fracture happens here because of road traffic accident, Air may say fluid nickel sakta. And that is why we ask in nose may say good liquid to nikla, air may say good liquid to nikla. So that's how we get an idea that the fracture is going to be happening either at the anterior cranial fossa level or the middle cranial fossa, these type of thing. Okay. So all these nerves passing by are making an impression. So there is an impression, for example, for lesser petrosal nerve. There is a hiatus and an impression for greater, uh, greater petrosal nerve. There is a trigeminal impression. So because yahan iske upar brain hoga so all those nervous structure are so close that they actually make an impression on the bony structures okay the lateral margin of the tegment tympana is turned downward not important the cerebral surface of the equamous temporal squamous temporal bone is concave because it then um, have the convex lobe of the brain okay it's easily understandable clinically if there is fracture of the middle cranial fossa, it may produce bleeding and discharge uh, from the CSF, of the CSF from the air. So, can say CSF nickel sakta hai. That's an important point. Bleeding through nose or mouth may also occur due to involvement of the sphenoid bone. So, the point is that uh, if middle cranial fossa is disturbed, you can have uh, leakages of CSF or blood through air as well as nose. And if it comes to the orbital cavity, it's more likely to be a uh, fracture associated with the anterior cranial fossa, okay? Now, the seventh and eighth cranial nerves may be damaged if the fracture also passes through the internal acoustic meatus. If a semicircular canal is damaged, vertigo may also occur because it is very closely associated with different parts of the brain, separated only by a thin plate of the middle cranial fossa. So that's all about the important anatomical landmarks and the concepts associated with middle cranial fossa. In the next video, we are going to focus then on the posterior cranial fossa.